What is going on then guys, welcome to a new video. So today then I'm gonna be showing you the fastest way to make money drop shipping. So nobody wants to make money slowly then. Everybody keeps messaging me saying, what's the fastest way? Should I do it this way? Should I do it that way? So this is what this video is gonna be aimed at then. If I was trying to make money as quickly as possible then, what kind of strategy would I implement? Now, before we get into the video then, as always, I am giving away a free consultation call in this one. So all you've got to do then is hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And if you left a comment then on my previous video, the winner will be announced at the end of this one. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And that being said then guys, without any further ado, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get straight into it. What is going on then guys? Welcome to my computer. So let's jump straight into this and the structure of this video is going to be then um, I'm going to go through pretty much absolutely everything that goes into starting and running a Shopify business. So we're going to start with the store, the kind of countries that we should be targeting. And then finally, I'm going to finish off with the products we should be choosing and the different marketing methods. I've got a marketing method for Instagram and one for Facebook as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So first things first, then what kind of store would I begin with? And I would choose a one product store purely because we're trying to make money as quickly as possible here. So with a one product store, then we obviously don't have to spend the time uploading, say 20 or 30 different products because if you build a store around one particular product, then it doesn't look weird. Whereas if you have a general store and you only have say two or three products on there, then it just doesn't give across a very good impression. It doesn't look very professional and it's gonna put people off. Whereas with a one product store, then you can get away with it because obviously the whole store is designed and built around that one product. So the reason for this then is it's quicker to set up. As I said, you don't have to upload say 20, 30 different products. Um, and I would still, however, though, include an upsell product. Obviously, when it comes to dropshipping or pretty much just any business, pretty much with any business, you wanna increase our profitability. And we do this, one way of doing this then is by increasing our average order values by offering upsells or cross-sells because it's one of the easiest ways to make extra money. You've probably heard of the term that was coined by McDonald's that goes, um, do you want fries with that? And simply them asking people that question when people are ordering their food, significantly increase their turnover. So essentially we wanna implement that same strategy. So make sure you have an upsell on your store and make sure it comes from the same supplier as your initial products because what that's gonna do then is you're gonna save that extra carriage charge plus the products are gonna to arrive together. So there's just gonna be less alarm bells and when your customer say only receives one product, they're obviously gonna come on to you and say, where's the other one? Whereas if they arrive together, then you just avoid that whole situation. So moving on to the country that I would choose to target, and I would definitely go for the US for a few reasons really. Number one, it's just a much larger audience than the UK, Australia, and Canada. It's probably bigger than all three of them put together. I tend to find as well that people in the US um, convert a lot, well I'd say a lot higher, but usually maybe one, maybe 2% at the very max. And if you're gonna have significant amount of orders going through your store, then it's soon gonna add up. So I just find it's an easier market um, to convert in. So I definitely choose the US. Um, shipping wise then it is quicker. If you look at the shipping times of ePacket, then it is quicker to the US again. So therefore you're gonna have a higher customer retention, less returns, less questions from customers, just less customer service to deal with. So all in all, a good thing. And finally then, when it comes to actually finding products to sell, then when in fact I can show you, if we look at products in the US, for instance, then, well, as you can see, there's only two options. There's only China and US. Depending on what um, niche you go into, you may be able to find suppliers in Europe, which will ship to the UK in a few days. I've done a video on it, so I'm not going into too much detail. But as you can see, the only two options here are the US and China. So all of these products then are actually located in the US. And if we just find a random one and have a look at the shipping times. So four to 13 days, it's only 3.39 as well. So as you can see, you can source your products a lot cheaper as well if you're selling to the US. So moving on then, what kind of product would I be choosing, would I go after? And number one then would definitely be a seasonal product. Again, for a few reasons. Number one is there's increase in slash peak demand. So that's essentially what a seasonal product is. It sells well at certain times of year. So for instance, then my first winning product was the LED dog collar. That is a seasonal product that only sells well during the months where there's not a lot of light. So during the winter times, for example, because obviously people have to walk their dog during the night. So 
The reason this is a good thing then is because there's going to be a demand for that product because we're coming into that season. They just go hand in hand. So one way you can check this then, for example, is to just simply use Google Trends. If we head over, um, I've got an example to show you guys. So cycling then would be a good niche because the weather is getting better. Then obviously people are going to be getting out on their bikes more often. And this and Google Trends confirms this. If we look at where the peaks in popularity in search terms for cycling, then you can keep you can clearly see then it kind of leads up to the summer months. There was a weird spike there, and then it just kind of drops down as the weather um, starts to get a bit worse. And then again, as we're coming through March, April time, all the way up to summer, then um, the interest starts to increase again. And as you can see, this happens year on year. So. We're coming through, we've just come into March now. So as you can see, now is the time where the popularity will start to increase. So cycling then would be a good niche to start selling products in because there's gonna be more and more people essentially looking for cycling products. Um, so how do you actually come up with different product ideas then? So how did I come up with cycling? So number one, then think about the kind of weather. So what changes now like what kind of seasons are we coming into obviously it's getting brighter during the nights now the weather is getting better so think about what people are or what people start to do this time of year and what they're spending their money on so obviously as the weather gets better then more and more people are going to start spending time outdoors so what do people do outdoors they ride on bikes they go to the park think of different garden products or think along the lines of say do people start playing more sports at this time of year start thinking about what people are doing during the seasons that are coming up and that's going to give you ideas then for different products a good way to look at it then is what will people be doing now that they won't have been doing say six months ago or three to six months ago so a good one might be drones obviously people you can't fly a drone when the weather is bad um, purely because if it hasn't got lights on then you're not going to be able to see it and if it's raining then you can't fly the drone in the rain so are there going to be more and more people starting to buy drones because the weather's getting better um, our pe people are start obviously start to go on holiday this time of year because the weather is better so what do people spend their money on when they're going on holiday think of different travel accessories or things like 4k action cameras obviously people a lot of people bring gopros and things like that along the lines well so as you can see just kind of going through those couple of things already you've got a few different product ideas that you can go and check against on google trends and to be honest when it comes to finding products or product ideas i tend to start an aliexpress so as you can see, I simply put cycling in, cycling in, make sure you filter by orders and it just keeps scrolling through until you see something that catches your eye. Because if it catches your eye, then, then the chances are it's going to catch somebody else's as well. And the more or kind of like the more eye catching a product is, then the better it's going to sell on Facebook as well. Because Facebook is a social media platform. It's built on things like that. Things that succeed on Facebook are things that go viral. And for something to go viral, somebody has to share it. And the reason why people want to share it then is because it's eye-catching and they want to show other people it as well. So um, try and think of products along those kind of lines as well. So in terms of what niche to go with then, make sure it's quite a large one. Obviously, there's going to be more scope then for scaling. If you choose something that's too small, then obviously there's going to be a limited amount of customers. So make sure there's just at least 1 million active users per month. And this is dead simple to find out. So if you simply head across to Audience Insights, make sure you choose the US as your country. And then just simply put your niche in there and just have a look up here and see how many monthly active people are. So as long as you've got at least a million up there, then there's plenty of scope to scale to some pretty decent numbers. So products and stores being covered then, let's go into the actual marketing strategies and how I would go about actually selling these products. So firstly then to start with, some people watching these videos prefer Instagram, some prefer Facebook, so I've got a strategy for both. So starting with Instagram then, I would choose five micro influencers for a couple of reasons really. Number one, they tend to have a higher engagement rate and they tend to actually talk to their followers as well and actually have a better relationship. Plus, they're going to be less used to being approached for these shout outs and therefore you will be able to find some pretty decent ones for very cheap. And essentially then what a micro influencer is, is anybody with say under 100k following. To be honest, I tend to find people around the 50K mark, but at the very max then just stick to under 100,000 people. When it comes to actually picking these influencers then, personal brands always work best. So essentially what a personal brand is, 
is is pretty much what I'm doing. So it's an actual person behind the social media profile. So make sure you choose those ones. Again, people have a better relationship with a person rather than just a page without a face behind it. If you think of certain if you think of Lab Bible, it's an absolutely massive one, but people don't have a good relationship with Lab Bible. Nobody knows who actually runs it. Whereas if you pick an actual influencer where people can relate to the face, um, they relate to the person better, they have a better relationship, and therefore they're just more likely to follow and actually endorse a product um, that they're selling. So another thing to do then is look at the comments on their pictures, on their posts. Um, and look at the engagement from the profile. So are, are they actually talking to their followers? Are their followers talking back to them? Um, is there conversation going on? Is it legit comments? Is it just people posting spam? Um, or is it actual real followers um, commenting real comments? So in terms of scheduling the post then, if you can, once you have all these micro influencers lined up, then try and get them all to post at the same time. And that's called a cluster post then, because it's essentially your product being posted and advertised by say five different influencers all at the same time. So you're gonna have a huge spike in traffic to your store. And the chances are then if somebody's following one influencer in a niche, they might be following that other influencer as well. So if they don't see the post from the first one, they might see it from the second one. So again, you've just got that better chance of more people seeing your post and remembering it and therefore actually clicking on it. Another reason then why you want to do this is because you wanna have the sales pop app installed. And what that does then is when somebody makes a purchase, it's just gonna do a little pop up on your store that says, so-and-so just purchased this product. And if you've got a huge spike of traffic coming onto your store and there's loads and loads of people on your store and loads and loads of people making purchases, then anybody that comes on is going to see that pop up that comes up every few seconds, every time somebody makes a purchase. And that's just going to instill in their mind confidence that it's a legit store and there's other people making purchases on this store. And therefore, they see it as that they can actually trust you as well. Last but not least then, make sure it's a post for at least 24 hours and try and get them to post it at peak time. So this is typically when people finish work and they tend to go home, chill out for a bit, they might be eating dinner, um, usually between hours of kind of like six and 9 p.m. where people tend to just sit on their phone and scroll through Instagram. Um, you just got a better chance then of getting more eyes on your actual ad. So that being said then guys, that is the Instagram strategy. Moving on to the final section of the video, which is the Facebook strategy. So as it says there in brackets, there is a video on this coming soon where I'm gonna go into a lot more detail than I will in this video. The idea of this video then was to kind of give you a general overview of the strategy that I would use. If you want me to do another video on this strategy but just go into crazy more detail, then all you gotta do then is leave a comment below. So how does this strategy work then? What we're gonna do is use 10 to 15 micro ad sets. And what a micro ad set then is, I'm referring to the budget. So we're gonna use a max of $2 per day per ad set. And I say 10 to 15, but it depends on your budget. If you wanna spend a bit more, then by all means go up to say 20, 25 different ad sets. And each ad set then is essentially gonna be one interest flexed with engaged shoppers. And what this is gonna do then is it's just gonna bring a ton of data back from a ton of different audiences and it's gonna tell us straight away which audiences are responding to this product and which ones aren't. So, and because we're only spending $2 per day as well, it gives us the scope to test loads and different audiences and just a fast, range of different interests and essentially see what is working and what isn't. So after two days then, kill the bottom 50%. So if you're running 10 ad sets, look at the data. You might, now you might not have any sales yet because obviously you're only spending $2 per day. But what this is gonna do then is it's gonna advance your knowledge of Facebook ads. If you have 10 ad sets, then you've got data to make comparisons against. So kill the bottom 50%, look at the cost per click, look at the CPM, look at the click through rate. And essentially, the if you're running 10 ad sets and the bottom five, make sure you kill them, then run those five for another two days and then kill the bottom 50% again. And therefore, what you're gonna be left with is essentially the best performing ad sets. And they're the ones that you wanna scale up to say five, $10 a day, let them run for a couple of days and essentially see if they start bringing in the purchases. And because you've tested so many different interests, so many different audiences, then you're gonna be left with the best of the best. And therefore, you've got a better chance of 
of finding that successful audience that's going to bring the purchases in then, then you can that you can then go on to start to scale and actually bring in the bigger numbers and actually achieve this one thousand dollars so that being said then guys that pretty much wraps up the video we've covered quite a lot any questions at all on anything um, then please do leave a comment down below i always get back to every single person um, so i'm happy to answer any questions you might have and that being said then guys if you're still watching thank you very much i really do appreciate everybody who watches the videos all the way through and what i'm going to do now then is announce the winner of the free consultation call from last video so here we are then guys on my previous video um, we're almost at 600 views and over 40 comments, which is just absolutely awesome. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate the support. The channel is going really quickly. It's really good, actually. So thank you. I really do appreciate it. Um, I don't think it's going to be long, to be honest, before we reach 10,000 subs. So anyway, that being said, let's copy the URL. Um, head over to the YouTube random comment picker. Get YouTube comments. And let's start the raffle and see who's, who's going to win the free call then. So the winner is then Ariane Haziri. Um, hopefully I've pronounced your name correctly. Apologize if I haven't. All you've got to do then, mate, is leave a DM in the comment section down below or hit me up on Instagram, whatever you choose, um, and we'll get that call arranged for you. And that being said then, guys, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you leave a comment down below to be entered into the next consultation call giveaway. Um, and I'll see you all in the next one.